Hello there. In the previous videos, I introduced you to phonological processes. We saw phonological processes related to assimilation and also those processes related to syllable structure processes. Today, I'm going to show you phonological processes that make your accent, your pronunciation of English sound very American. In fact, one of the first decisions that EFL students or learners of English find very difficult to make is exactly to choose between an American pronunciation of English or a British pronunciation of English. This is normal, since the key factor here is exactly exposure. Actually, the more you are exposed to American English, the more American your pronunciation will be. And the more you are exposed to British English, the more British your pronunciation and your accent will be. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly the phonological processes that shape your American accent. I'm gonna focus on American pronunciation of English. I will give you two phonological processes that actually govern how you pronounce words or the t sound specifically in a more American way. Phonology is about patterning and the sound system. So of course, American English must have a system that governs exactly the American pronunciation and the American accent. Phonology describes two phonological processes that are actually behind making your English sound very American. These phonological processes are glottalization and flap. First phonological process that is typical to American English is glottalization. What do you mean by glottalization? To understand glottalization, it's very important to understand that the word glottalization is derived from the adjective glottal, and the word glottal is derived from the noun glottis. To understand glottalization, it's very important to understand first what do you mean by a glottal sound and what is the glottis. The glottal sound in English is a stop sound that in its production, the air is totally obstructed at the glottis. It is produced by a sudden shutting and opening of the glottis. The glottal sound is transcribed as a uh in IPA. Now, let me explain what is the glottis. Actually, when we produce speech, what we do exactly is this. We initiate the air from the lens. The air travels through the windpipe through the larynx. Within the larynx, there is a space that is surrounded by the vocal cords. That space is exactly what we call the glottis. The glottis is very important in the production of speech. Why? Because when the glottis is actually closed, this means that the vocal cords are actually brought together. At this stage, we are producing voiced sounds. But when the glottis is open, which means when the vocal cords are actually Apart, we are producing exactly here what we call voices sounds. The glottis is very important because we move from the first stage of talking about just an air to the second stage in the production of speech, which is not talking about an air anymore, but we are talking about the production of a voice. So what is glottalization? When Americans glottalize and how do Americans glottalize? What is the sound that is actually glottalized? To understand this, let's take these words here. Let's see exactly how the t sound is pronounced in normal English. For example, eaten, button, mountain, gotten, written, sentence. The t there in these words is pronounced as a t, as an alveolar stop t. But let's look how do Americans pronounce the t sound in these words here. Let's see. Eaten, button, and mountain, gotten, written, and sentence, eaten, eaten. Can you hear the difference? Of course you can. What you can notice is that in American English, the t sound disappears. The t sound in American English is replaced in these words by the glottal stop uh, here. Sentence becomes sentence. 
Eaten becomes eaten. Gotten, gotten. Mountain, mountain. And others. T is replaced automatically by the uh sound here. But here is a question. Why Americans pronounce the t here as uh? Do Americans always change t to uh? Of course no. But this is very specific to phonological environments where exactly that t exists. If you notice, the t sound in this word is always followed by a syllable that starts with a weak vowel schwa and followed by a nasal n here, which makes that nasal sound, the n, as plus syllabic because it's exactly in a weak syllable preceded by a schwa. So we can understand that Americans here in English they always actually pronounce the t sound as a uh, whenever that t is followed by a plus syllabic nasal n sound here. This is the same case with sentence, sentence, gotten, gotten, eaten, eaten, and many other examples. So what is glottalization? Glottalization is the act of changing the t sound and pronouncing it as the glottal stop uh. It's actually about constructing the glottis in the production of the t, which makes it change automatically to the glottal stop uh sound. But hold on, Americans or the American pronunciation of, of English is totally glottalized sometimes. We find that Americans reinforce or superimpose these or this glottalization process on different sounds while speaking. Let's take this example. That's bad for my voice or job prospects or life in general. So cute. So cute. I'm Hi. Now, I'm Hi. Now, I'm Hi. Now. And Chloe just don't get it. Get it. Get it. The reinforcement of glottalization is also referred to in phonology as vocal fry vocal fry. In normal speech, when we produce sounds, the vocal folds, they are brought together in a very smooth way. But in glottalization, or when glottalization is reinforced, the vocal folds are tightly squeezed, allowing only bubbles of air to break through. And this is causing what we call the vocal fry. So instead of having just a normal way of speaking, Glottalization is reinforced, and that's exactly what happened in these examples, or what shapes exactly the American language. The American accent or the American pronunciation is hugely influenced by glottalization or the vocal fry. This is exactly the first part or the first phonological process that is actually shaping the American accents. The second phonological process that shapes the American accent or American pronunciation is what we call flapping. What is flapping? When do Americans flap and how Americans produce a flapped sound? To understand and to answer these questions, let's take these words as example. Let's check and notice how the t sound is normally pronounced in English. Normally, the t sound is pronounced this way. We say better, photo, city, water, meeting, whatever. Now let's see exactly how Americans pronounce the t sound in these words. Better, photo, city, water. Meeting. Whatever. Can you hear the difference? Of course you can. In American pronunciation of English, the t sound disappears. It is actually replaced by another sound we call the flapped t, which is actually a sound that looks like d and r. The word better becomes better. The word photo becomes photo. The word city becomes city. The word whatever becomes whatever. The word water becomes water. 
The pronunciation of t is totally changed to a flopped t that is actually like a sound that looks very similar to the r sound for us as non-native speakers. But for Americans, they believe that that t sound is replaced by just the d sound. They believe that that d is actually pronounced in a very continuous way that looks like r sound. In phonology, this is what we call the flopped t. It looks very similar to the r sound. So water, water. But why exactly do Americans replace that t to the flopped r sound? What is the environment? What is the phonological environment where exactly that sound is changed to the r sound? It is very clear from these examples that flopping takes place whenever the t sound is between two vowels. It's actually between or in an intervocalic position. But do Americans always change or flap the t sound whenever it is between two vowels? What about these examples? The word attack or the word determine. The t sound in these two words is exa exactly also in an intervocalic position. It's also between two vowels. Why Americans do not say attack? Why Americans do not say determine? They actually say attack. They actually say determine. It's very clear. The rule is this. Flapping takes place whenever the t sound is an, in an intervocalic position between two vowels and the first vowel should be stressed while the second vowel should be unstressed. To understand exactly why Americans flap the t sound, it's very important to understand the phonological environment where that t sound exists. T is always between two vowels and t is exactly an alveolar voiceless stop and the vowels are voiced. So imagine we have a t, which is a voiceless sound between two voiced sounds. The voicing must continue. And in order to continue, the t sound is changing to another sound that is actually voiced. And that sound is exactly the flopped t, which sounds like a r sound. And r is exactly a voiced consonant. So flopping takes place in order to make the voicing continue. Flopping is there for American pronunciation because it d sound exists in an intervocalic position between two vowels. The first vowel is actually stressed while the second vowel is unstressed. So what is flopping? So briefly, flopping is what? Flopping is exactly the phonological process which changes the t to a r sound. It changes the alveolar t to an alveolar r sound. It is also known or used interchangeably with other terms like intervocalic flopping or alveolar flopping or also tapping. So, if you are a learner of English, if you are an EFL student and you want to make your pronunciation of English sound very American, Pay attention to these phonological processes, glottalization and flapping. Glottalize the t and also flap the t. This way, your pronunciation of English will be very American. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for more coming videos. Take care.